For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Ambassador Lindy Wemabuza discusses her book titled Conversations with Uncle O.R. The book Conversations with O.R. has a collection of letters that were written by kids who were born, raised and educated in exile like author Sisongem Simang to O.R. Tell us how the idea of this book started. Well, it started because it was announced that uh, Last year, from the 27th of October, mm -hmm. when we're having his 100-year celebration, mm -hmm. it would be Oliver Tambo's mm -hmm. year. But that year should end this year on the 26th of October. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what do we do to celebrate? I'm, I'm sure everybody was thinking mm -hmm. the same way, but as somebody who's interested in books, I thought, not only do I do my own poetry, but link him with significant people in his life, most significant to some. But I must also go to those people I knew in exile, the children. They were all around us, they were young, and, but they had the possibility of having encounters with him. So I invited them to take us down memory lane on some of their meetings or, or experiences with this great towering giant. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Yeah. Children, nine years, ten years, mm -hmm. having an Oliver Tambo come to their house. Mm -hmm. I wanted that experience, and I think they've done an exceedingly good job. What kind of letters were written by these kids to OR? Their love letters for his 100-year birthday. Mm -hmm. Dear Dada, Tandi Modisi says, mm. uh, Dear Uncle O.R., Dear President, mm. all of them are so full of love and, and they are missing him. You see, you mm. hear that. Mm. Oh, how we wish you had been with us during this very difficult time of our struggle now. Mm. But they are also enriched by having experienced a life under him. Mm -hmm. They talk about their training uh, as pioneers, Masupatsila A, Walter Sisulu mm -hmm. in Lusaka, and their trips to other countries organized by the ANC mm -hmm. for them to be with children of the world mm -hmm. in world festivals, mm -hmm. in pioneer camps at the time in the Soviet Union, or in Norway, or in Sweden, wherever people were willing to take them into their homes. Some of them even got adopted by the international community. I know Bulane Kingston was adopted by a Norwegian family as their daughter. She would go there for her holidays. And besides that type of adoption, the amount of outpouring for the ANC was because they saw these children and the potential in the children who were in need of love mm. because they didn't have their country. Mm. And these children are so political in their writings to the father mm. of the movement, of the country, of the movement they knew. Uh, they are political because every Saturday they were going to a school organized by Ritam Fenyan one comrade, uh, originally from the Soviet Union, but married to one of our comrades. And every Saturday, she and another lady used to have these children. What were they there for? To teach them South African history, history as we teach, not as we were taught in Bantu education schools. Uh, the ANC, the history of the ANC, the challenges the ANC was facing, and the international solidarity, what countries and peoples are on our side. And they were taught about a return to South Africa. Always, mm. the struggle is for going back home. Mm. So they, they were enriched in their experience. They were, of course, denied, greatly denied, mm. the possibility of knowing the, the soil, the nitty-gritty that makes a South African a South African, the 
environment and the languages. Unfortunately, because the parents often were full-time members of the ANC working, they didn't have the time to be teaching them languages, our African languages. Mm -hmm. Conversations were mainly in English. And so that, that's a, def a huge deficiency in their upbringing. But to make up for that, they acquired other languages. They speak Russian fluently, they speak Spanish, they speak Kinyanja, Swahili, they sing Kiswahili. Not much has been written about the children who grew up in exile. What sparked your interest in this topic? Well, I went through one child amongst them mm -hmm. to help me do the project. I couldn't do it alone. I didn't have the context. Mm -hmm. I asked Pulani Shabalala Kingston mm -hmm. to contact them without anyone saying no in unison. They said, Ifuna, and they've just poured their souls out, mm. didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did. And I'm just so, I think it's, it's a brilliant book mm. because I didn't write it. I can say that. <laughs> yes. Please, I yeah. don't have to be modest no. about what my children yes. have produced here. It, I think it's brilliant. I think it's a gem. Mm. And it should be in all schools because it's children talking as children then. They're not talking. Of course, they are grown ups now. They are adults. But they're recalling their childhood. Listen to Dumisani Sangweni. He's driving out of his house with his father in the morning, going to school. What does he see? This funny thing flying over as they are out of their gate. It's a helicopter. It comes down, it drops paper. He's curious. And the paper is addressing the Zambian people. And the people dropping the paper are white. We have blackened their faces. What does it say to a nine-year-old going to school that there is this danger hovering over us? And the, they are Smith's regime from the old Rhodesia saying to the Zambians, you are going to suffer as a consequence of harboring terrorists in your country. It's this ANC that is going to bring you trouble. And then what happens to Dumisani later? He understands this, this threat all around. And then the ANC decides that his home is going to be one of the safe houses for the leadership. And OR comes and lives in his home, sleeps in his home. What does it do? So the threat is gone because the leader of his organization is actually giving him security inside his home. Never like, never mind what Smith was trying to say to his little psychology. Here is the biggest man in the ANC movement in my home. Can you live with yourself? You're bubbling, you want to go and tell your friends at school. And then, um, but then later, his own sister, Lindiwe, works with me in Sweden. She had finished the high school and was due to go to, to train uh, in hospitality in Switzerland. So she had some nine months to spare. She asked if she can come and help in the office in Sweden. Yes, I said, of course, I needed some extra hands, especially if they are going to come free. <laughs> And she comes, but it's the time the apartheid regime had decided to bomb the office in Sweden. She's doing such a magnificent, magnificent job helping. I edited a book, mm -hmm. Malibongo, which was ANC women's poems in 1980. She did all of that work putting that book together as my little secretary. And then they bomb the office. She's inside the office with a comrade, Mohammed Hussein, and a guest who was visiting from Chile. These children have had horrendous experiences. You look at Kenanile Sikwali, Tokyo's uh, niece. 
she was at home when the raid happened in 1982 in Lesotho. They hid under the table and they hear the raiding going on and the father shooting back because he's trained. And they had dress rehearsed this thing, the attacks. That's why they go under the table. Experiences of children like Tidi Lujabe, she's the daughter of Ambassador Tandi Lujabe. In Botswana, when they raid in 1985, the raid was done, and so many of our comrades are killed there. She is there in Botswana, and the house where she used to go after school, the home of Lindy and uh, George, has been, they've been killed. She doesn't know why she can't go there, and she goes to the embassy, embassy of Norway. She's harbored for six months by the Norwegians because her mother has been instructed to leave because she would be next in line. I mean, children have had such horrendous experiences. Exile was not such a, a wonderful place. They witnessed the killings, the deaths of comrades, of aunties and uncles, of friends. You have a child who was in Belgium, uh, Jackie Mutsipe, they were children going to school there. And their father was the chief representative of the ANC. And several times were attempts on his life. And one time, somebody comes, calls on the phone and says, I'm coming for an interview. He agrees for the interview. As soon as he opens the door, the shots are fired. Fortunately, he's also a trained person. Mm -hmm. He's able to respond and duck the, the bullets. Mm -hmm. And that's how he saved, his life was saved. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, apartheid was hounding us all over the world. Yeah. You know the story of Darcy September. Mm -hmm. And these children mm -hmm. saw Darcy as auntie. Can you imagine mm -hmm. what happens when Darcy, who was in your home one month, the next month, you hear she's gone by apartheid, the long arm of the terror of apartheid. What kind of thoughts and ideas do you think the letters will invoke amongst the readers? I think the same thing that they invoke in me, a grown-up. Oh, awesomeness. The tremendous opportunity the children had to study about the history of their organization, which the children in South Africa didn't have. The opportunity to study the history of the country by learned people. If you had a Jack Simons, you know Jack Simons, a professor of university level, coming to your Masupatzila Saturday class to explain something of the movement. If you had somebody like Mark Schoppe, who used to be a leader of the trade unions in this country and led the South African Congress of Trade Unions coming to your classes. Mm -hmm. If you had um, writers, poets like Wally Sirote mm -hmm. coming to inspire you with their mm -hmm. poems. And the children have done some poetry writing themselves under those or oh, those, those spirited poets and writers who they encountered as children. Oh, I think it's such a, a, a trove of wealth, of intellectual wealth, the experiences of young people. They were denied a lot by not being at home, but it was compensated by the wealth that they were getting from the, the surroundings, just the sense of community that the ANC maintained in exile. And lastly, tell us about the feedback you have received from those who have read the book. The parents were there at the launch of the book. Uh, Mrs. Sangweni was there. 
uh, Yoli Samudisi was there because Tandi was there. Mm -hmm. Tandi Ranko, the ambassador, Ambassador Rankwe Lujabe was there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the mother of uh, Nokanya Jele was there, Catherine Jele was there. Um, of course, uh, the friends and siblings of the children were there, main, most of them. Um, there were two Shabalala girls, Zuki and Bulani Kingston. Uh, their, their children were there. Uh, so that in itself is a great vote of confidence and shows how much they love the idea, they love the content of the book. And what is, I think, is so special is that you actually see them, mm. the pictures of these children, mm. as they were then and as they are today. That was activist Lindy Wemaboza speaking to Krima Media's Polity about her book titled Conversations with Uncle O.R.